and I sleep with Louis Theroux on my chest. Hi there, I'm B, and this mirror behind me is probably gonna get really annoying. But more importantly, Louis Theroux has a new documentary series. And I thought, what better way to celebrate than making a tier list? I realized that this was two months ago, but I started editing this and then had a film premiere to prep for. Turns out that's quite a lot of work. You may know, I am a filmmaker. I said that with such hesitation because I'm not sure I believe it myself. We are a professional, we are a professional uh, operation. However, I do have a master's degree in documentary film directing. I have been obsessed with documentaries for, I would say, almost 10 years now. And I have been working in the film and TV industry on and off for about four and a half years now. So I think that gives me a level of authority to say maybe hopefully some little bits of insightful information about my thoughts about Louis Theroux and his documentaries. But realistically, this is just so that I get to think about documentaries for more than the 23 hours of the day I already do. For the sake of time and to make things more complex for my own judgment and making my opinions and this sentence itself doesn't make sense. I have decided to do this by judging series themselves. And then there are also, I think, 12 standalone films that I'm also going to judge. They will be judged alone. The series are going to be judged as series. Art is all subjective anyway, and I didn't want this video to be four hours long. We are going to make a tier list of Louis Theroux's documentaries. Ta-da! This is my pajama t-shirt uh, because I sleep with Louis Theroux. Would you consider that kinky? Oh, yeah. That's yeah, cool. that'd be kinky. Let's begin at the beginning. In 1998, he had his first standalone series. Weird Weekends Series 1 had the episodes Christianity, where he meets the family, UFOs, porn, and that's the one where he meets various porn stars. There's Head for the Hills, where he meets military enthusiasts and right-wing patriots who are preparing for a global catastrophe. And then we have episode five weird christmas where he has one person from each episode of the series and they all have christmas together in new york what are my opinions on it the two standout episodes are the porn episode and the reunion christmas episode don't drink every time i say porn in this by the way i'm gonna give it an a tier i think the porn episode's brilliant the other ones are like really good and fine and nice and there's kind of a level of nostalgia to them but they don't necessarily stand out to me as like my favorite episode of louis through ever so next up we have weird weekends series 2 from 1999. infomercials swingers black nationalism about a group of american black nationalists who were branded as anti-semitic homophobic misogynistic and racist demolition derby is it derby or derby he actually gets in to a demolition car then there's off off broadway kind of ex-broadway stars who are like out of work actors and in that episode he also does an audition himself and one of the kind of things I think a lot of people really love about Louis Theroux is that he really does get involved with the subject. In the porn episode, that's probably like the most distinct memory of it, is the fact that he actually is in one of the pornos. You can keep that composite, and if you need to, call me. And then we have episode six, which is the wrestling episode. Off the back of Weird Weekends 1, I don't think I can put it in the same tier because it's the blueprint, it's the original. But I remember watching the Swingers episode when I was a little bit younger and finding it really interesting. Wow. And it's also interesting, kind of from a historical perspective, looking at that and seeing how things have changed. I'm going to say, like, it's not his best work, but it's it's not bad. It's still good. It's still Louis Theroux. <laughs> a lot of these I actually watched when I was about 18. At that point, I'd kind of been avoiding him because every time you tell someone you want to work in documentary, they're like, oh, do you want to be in the next Louis Theroux? And I'm like, not really. I want to be the next me. So I'm just caveating that in case anyone comments and is like, why did you put that episode in S tier? Um, when it's problematic as fuck. And now we've got Weird Weekend Series 3. Now this came out in 2000. The first episode is self-fulfillment about a hypnotist who claims he can make dreams come true. India Enlightenment about Westerners going to India to seek enlightenment. Whites about Africana separatists. Then episode 4 is bodybuilding which is I think my favourite episode in this series covering extreme bodybuilding. We've got Looking for Love which is about a Bangkok marriage agency. And then episode 
episode six is the rap episode. Riding in my beard, you really have to see it. Don't really see much difference in quality wise, in my own opinion, between series two and series three. I think they both have some really strong episodes as well as having the slightly more like lighthearted versions. It, it creates a sense of balance that I quite like. I'm trying to like not be too nice and put everything in A tier or S tier. So I think I'm gonna put this in the same tier when Louis met. Now series one has when Louis met Jimmy about Jimmy Savile and is considered by a lot of reports in the like top 50 documentaries of all time. It is one of my favorite documentaries of all time. And then we've got When Louis Met Paul and Debbie, which is about Paul Daniels and Debbie McGee. Paul Daniels is a magician and TV presenter and Debbie McGee was his kind of assistant, but she was a performer in her own right as well. And then we've got When Louis Met the Hamiltons, which is about former Tory MP, Neil Hamilton and his wife Christine, as they kind of try and profit off being like objects of curiosity, I think the phrase is. I will say that the fact that this series has the Jimmy Savile episode in, it's like terrifying watching back. But because this series came out in like 2000, 2001, I didn't watch it until like, what, 15 years later? So I didn't care about the Hamiltons, which I think is the problem with both series of When Louis Met. And for that reason, I am afraid I'm gonna have to put it in A tier instead of S tier. When Louis Met series two, which came out in the year 2002, when Louis Met Anne Widdicombe, who's a Tory MP who has just got worse and worse. <laughs> she was quite involved with the Brexit shit show when Louis met Chris Eubank and as a boxer myself, obviously found that one really interesting. And then episode three, we've got when Louis met Keith Harris and Orville in Panto, which is about the ventriloquist Keith Harris and like Orville is his little puppet. Episode four, we've got when Louis met Max Clifford, the publicist who kind of covered quite a lot of major pop stars. And then we've got living with Louis, various people from the two series talk about what it was like to be interviewed by Louis Theroux, which I think is quite interesting. Sort of special mention to the episode about Keith Harris and Orville. I think it's quite an interesting angle on someone actually not enjoying the fame that they've got. I think it's a very interesting perspective of how he's continuing his love for the arts. I'm gonna go C tier. I think it's also kind of telling that beyond these two series, he did stay towards interviewing people who the general public didn't know until his podcast grounded. And I thought about putting his podcast in here, but I thought it's a different thing. It's not a documentary. <laughs> I did really like his podcast, except the episode with Miriam Margulies where he like wouldn't shut up about her sex life. That was kind of weird. Next up we have Louis and, which are all from late 2003. First episode is Louis in the brothel. He spends three weeks in, I think it's like America's newest legal brothel. And then we've got Louis, Martin and Michael, which is Louis through trying to get an interview with Michael Jackson, where he's kind of like beat out to it by Michael Bashir. And we've got Louis and the Nazis. Now, I actually think these are three of my favorite episodes of Louis Theroux. A special mention to Martin and Michael, because I love any documentary that is about the process of making a documentary. It's also really fun watching it and going back and being like, Louis Theroux can't get access to these people because they think he's like not very impressive with his like tiny little BBC camera crew. Don't be deceived by the tiny little camera. We are a professional. We are a professional uh, operation, and it's yeah, it's broadcast quality. It's broadcast quality. It's nothing to uh, nothing to worry about. I don't think there is a weak link in that trio, so I think this might be our first S tier. I've kind of grouped these together myself, the Louis Theroux colon <laughs> documentaries. They're not just documentaries about his colon. So we've got Gambling in Las Vegas, Under the Knife and Behind Bars. Gambling in Las Vegas actually came out on my ninth birthday. So I think it's only appropriate um, that that is one of my favorite episodes of Louis Theroux. I remember trying to watch it when I was slightly younger and not really getting it, thinking it was kind of boring, didn't really understand it. Then I watched it when I was a little older had my own income, those sorts of things. And I was like, this is fucked. Then we've got extreme plastic surgery. And I am afraid to say, because I have an inherent deep fear of the idea of any kind of surgery, seeing it makes me want to throw up. It is gonna be demoted because of that, which is a shame because I think the gambling episode's great. And then we have Behind Bars. He has quite a few episodes where he 
looks at sort of crime and punishment and prisons. And I'm gonna say like, yes, they're interesting, but I don't think they're very unique. You're not the only person filming in a prison. Even if he was like the first person to make a prison documentary, it doesn't feel original. <laughs> and also because I nearly threw up watching Under the Knife, even though it's not like extreme footage in any way. I think we're gonna go E tier. Do not make me look at that shit. I wasn't quite sure what I'd just seen, but I knew it was time for me to leave. Okay, so that's all of his older series covered off and we have been filming for nearly an hour. So firstly, congratulations, you have made it through the first of five rows. Boy, you did it, you did it! Number two, we have his newer series. There was a lot of series in the kind of 2000s and then he went on did quite a lot of individual episodes and then he came back to the series format around 2014. So LA Stories has three episodes, City of Dogs, where he meets the dogs in LA, Edge of Life, Life of Edge, whichever way around I feel like saying it. He heads to West Hollywood's Seder Sinai Medical Center to experience the American way of death. Among the sex offenders, where he looks at how California deals with sex offenders. It was all interesting and fine because that is the base level for all of his films. So I think it's gonna be an E tier. Not because I like really disliked it, just because there wasn't anything like phenomenally memorable about it. So next up in the newer series, we've got Dark States. Only 2017, first episode is called Heroin Town, with America's love affair with the prescription painkillers that led to widespread dependency on opiates. And this was around the time there was quite a lot of documentaries about heroin addiction and opiates because of Oxycontin, oxytocin. Which one's the drug and which one's the hormone? Episode two is sex trafficking in Houston. And then we've got murder in Milwaukee about a police department tackling very, very high gun crime rates. There was a thread through the whole series. The difficulty of poverty, that was the real problem. I had actually worked for a distribution company that was distributing at least two documentaries about like oxys and painkiller prescription addictions. And I also really recently to this watched a documentary called Heroin with an E on the end, which is about the women in Huntingdon, the same area, basically save lives and try and help people get out of this addiction. And equally, I've seen multiple documentaries since then. I think The Business of Drugs was one of them. I think Michael Moore touched on it at some point because of the level of access. I think at no point do you ever feel any kind of negative feelings towards the contributors. And I think that is really impressive to like remove those cultural biases. I'm gonna say Dark States. It's getting an A from me. Altered States, which is a 2018 series. Love Without Limits, which is about polyamory. Choosing Death. And then episode three is Take My Baby, which is about women who cannot or will not keep their newborn babies. I don't have any strong feelings about this series. I think it was decent. I think there was just a level of like Louis Theroux exhaustion by that point. Like he has made so many films. I think it's a D tier maybe, just because there's like no episode in it that really stuck out to me as like, oh, this is so good. Life on the Edge, which was his 2020 series, which basically went back and spoke to people he'd interviewed before. I think this is to tie in with his 50th birthday. It's like his lockdown series, basically, like most of it's filmed from his home. Beyond Belief, Dark Side of Pleasure, Law and Disorder, and Family Ties. I thought this was decent. I thought it was a kind of creative thing to do during COVID-19. It's always kind of nice to have an update on people that you've seen a documentary about. I'm probably gonna give it a D, not because I didn't like it. I don't really wanna watch lockdown content. We're gonna go on to his most recent series. If you've seen this, let me know. Let me know what you think about it. Let's have a let's have a conversation about it. So we've got Louis Theroux's Forbidden America. Kind of focused on social media. First episode is Extreme and Online, which is about online white supremacists. They don't like calling themselves white supremacists, but they are. Episode two is Rap's New Frontline. And episode three is Pawns Me Too. I'm not gonna give too much commentary on the rap episode because I don't think I'm like an expert in like music documentaries and talking about that. So I'm gonna talk more about Extreme and Online and Pawns Me Too. I thought Extreme and Online was probably one of his best episodes like ever. It is one of the first times, if not the first time, that the contributors are using Louis as well as him using them. Now that's not to say that it's using to interview someone for a documentary, but obviously he is gaining content out of 
their views. He really goes into the way that his presence impacts what content these extremists are putting out online. And I think that is one of the interesting things of him having to acknowledge his own impact on the situations that he's in. Louis, are you in the chat? Louis! Louis! I must take value off it, having my face on it. <laughs> Feels like it should have maybe been referenced a little earlier, but it fits in really, really well with that film. Pawns Me Too, I think it was a really interesting angle on a topic that he keeps coming back to, focused towards the more empowering side of things like OnlyFans and creating explicit content yourself rather than being within the institution of a potentially very exploitative company. It was a really important conversation that I feel like has been honestly at this point like a over 20 year conversation that he has been profiling these members of the sex work community and what they've been talking about. I'm not going to give him all the credit. The Hot Girls Wanted series and Pornocracy are two really really strong documentaries about the porn industry and online porn. They were made slightly before the kind of rise of OnlyFans so take it with that knowledge but I recommend them. This is quite high up on my list potentially because I only watched it very recently because it's his newest but I just think even though I didn't necessarily feel a hundred percent comfortable all the time with some of his questions around sexual assault there is that power imbalance that does make me slightly uncomfortable but that's not to say that it's not a really important thing for someone as mainstream as Louis Through is talking about these topics. I think I'm gonna B tier this one. Louis you did it! You did it! Now we're on to section three or grouping three, which is his multi part on one topic kind of documentaries. First on the list, we have one of his more famous series, The Most Hated Family in America. So The Most Hated Family in America came out in 2007, but then he revisited it in 2011 with The Most Hated Family in Crisis, and then again, surviving The Most Hated Family in America after like, the head of the family had died. So this is to do with the Westboro Baptist Church, which is a church where basically all the members are pretty much from one family and they're just known for like extreme homophobia and also picket at the funerals of soldiers who've died, which is horrible. How many years would that be? Over a 12 year period. I don't have a hugely strong opinion on this series. It's one of the most well-known ones, which there's part of me that's like, <sighs> I'm cooler than that. And this is where we unfortunately ran into technical difficulties and uh, I lost the footage for this section, but I put it in a tier. We also unfortunately lost the footage for my opinions on Law and Disorder, which he had several episodes based in different locations. These were fine. I give pretty similar opinions about the Miami Mega Jail. That's coming up next but it was an E tier. So the Miami Mega Jail series, which is from 2011, I have a pretty similar feeling as I do towards the other Law and Disorder type episodes, just because it's not that I'm not interested in the life of imprisoned people, I definitely am. I just think by the time I got to watching these episodes, I had seen so many documentaries about the insides of prisons compared to something like his insight into gambling which was something that I didn't really know a huge amount about outside of the stereotypes before watching that documentary. Mega Jail is going along with apparently all all of the prisony ones pretty much which is E tier. So next up we have America's Most Dangerous Pets from 2011. He then did a later episode called Shooting Joe Exotic. I actually don't think I'd seen the original before seeing Tiger King, which does change my opinion because Tiger King was so badly edited that anything else looks good. It kind of dampened my interest in it and I did think going back and doing his own version of something on Joe Exotic did kind of feel like jumping on the hype around Joe Exotic, but that doesn't mean it wasn't interesting. The particular standout moment is when he's like holding the, I think it's a chimpanzee that he's holding, terrified. No, wait, 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 no, okay, everything's fine. But that doesn't mean it's one of like my tip top faves, but I am gonna give this a B tier. I think it deserves it, because B I guess is the only letter that's also an animal. So next up we have Extreme Love from 2012, and there are two episodes in this and one deals with autism and one deals with dementia. I did find the episode about autism interesting because of the representation of potentially a 
quite like innovative way of educating people who are neurodivergent. I think all of his ones that are filmed at institutions, I just am not as interested in them, honestly. I think the ethical lines within his documentaries are very interesting. Happy to talk about that at length, and I'm sure all of the risk assessments were done. So I'm gonna stop going on about ethics and I'm gonna give it a D just because though it was interesting and I did learn something, it didn't inspire me as much as I think some of his other films have. I've realized that the light from my screen is actually changing the lighting conditions and all in all, we're gonna take back everything I said about having a film degree. By Reason of Insanity, which is actually a two part that came out in one go, which is about psychiatric hospitals in Ohio. An interesting angle to choose that they are patients who've committed serious crimes while having mental health crises or while suffering from severe mental health issues. And I think it does open up a conversation, probably better than the prison-y ones because it's a different angle. I think it's decent, so it's getting a D. A D for decent. Boy, you did it, you did it! So now we have the pre-2014 individual kind of specials. First one is African Hunting Holiday. So this was released in April of 2008. He was churning out the content. Kudos to the work rate. So this is yet again, one of the ones that I can't necessarily remember as well, because it is one of the very first ones that I saw. It's fine, so I think it's going in the D for decent. Next up, we have A Place for Pedophiles, which was his first documentary from 2009. It is obviously a very controversial topic and a very delicate topic that I do think is actually dealt with really, really well. I understood the topic a lot more because of this. And I think it is of his episodes and films that are filmed within kind of non-home environments. I do think that this is probably the strongest. Louis is grappling with whether or not he can trust people. Someone who's, I'm attempting to form kind of a relationship for the, for the sake of filming, and I'm also constantly aware that people at home will think, you know, why are you being nice to that guy given what he did? So I'm gonna say because I learned quite a lot from this documentary and it's definitely one of his older ones that really stuck with me. I'm saying it's going quite high up. I think I might give it an A actually, just because it must have stuck with me for a reason. And now we have from the same year, A City Addicted to Crystal Meth about drug addiction in Fresno. Feels very much in the same vein as Heroin Town. And you can see the way that Louis has managed to get people to trust him in it. I'm gonna give it a C because it was good, but not like one of the ones that I really like stuck with me or like I particularly feel strongly about. Then we've got Louis Theroux's America's Medicaid Kids. And I'm just gonna make a comment that the poster for this one looks like it says Louis America's Through Medicaid Kids. So America's Medicaid Kids is from 2010. I feel like just this era of his films, I'm like, okay, I get it. Louis Theroux is going into an environment, meeting people who have lives different to what you might expect. And then you learn about them and he asks kind of intrusive questions, but it's kind of okay because it's Louis Theroux. There's not too much like special stuff that comes out of that. So I think it's a D for decent. So now we have The Ultra Zionists, which is from 2011. And I'm just gonna say, I am gonna judge this purely on how I felt watching it when I was 18 years old. So that was six years ago. I have not rewatched it since learning more. That's my disclaimer for this one. That being said, it was, I think the first Louis Theroux documentary I saw. So I'm gonna give it credit for that. <laughs> it definitely sparked some really interesting conversation with the person I was watching it with. I don't remember being blown away by the way it was made or anything. I just remember being very impressed with the fact that he would put himself in those situations, which now as like a more hardcore Louis Theroux fan, I see as like quite normal for him to do. But back then I remember being very impressed by it. Above anything else, I do think it was a good entryway into the topic. I have since educated myself more since watching the documentary. So I'm gonna give it some credit for that as well. Therefore, I am going to put it in the C tier because it encouraged me to learn more about something I didn't know about. And next up in his older films, we have the iconic My Scientology movie. This was actually from 2016, which is I think before some of the ones in the other category, but in my brain, it just fit into this one more. And also the other category was too overpopulated. This was released in cinemas in 2016, and it's the only Louis Saru film, as far as I'm aware, that was released in the cinema. I'm gonna be basic and not really criticize it, to be honest. It sits alongside Martin Michael, Louis Martin and Michael? Louis Michael, Martin. 
that one, just because it is just a different way of making a film that just felt much more creative. If you haven't seen it, it kind of recreates the behavior of these Scientology leaders through kind of casting and having actors involved because it's a cult full of actors. I just think it's a really, really interesting way of creating a film about a topic when you haven't got any access to the people that the topic is about. I know he's a BBC reporter. I have no idea his name. Louis. And for that reason, it's going S tier. Louis, you did it! You did it! I don't think my camera is gonna last for our final category, which is the newer individual episodes. I'm gonna see you either this evening after I get back from my kickboxing lesson or tomorrow. See you in a minute. I'm back. I'm in my gym kit which basically actually makes me just look like a commentary YouTuber because I've got a hoodie and a beanie on. I actually took Chloe kickboxing with me and no, I haven't showered since going. Everything's fine. We're gonna start off with Louis Theroux, Transgender Kids. As a queer filmmaker, this is obviously something I care quite strongly about. My most recent film is about trans identity within a family unit. I think it's quite interesting because I did watch this quite early on in my acknowledgement of my own queerness and gender non-conformity and all of that kind of thing. It is obviously not exhaustive of the entire gender spectrum, but I was very pleasantly surprised about the inclusion of kids that weren't just like binary trans people. And there's one kid in it who I don't know what pronouns any of them use, so I'm gonna use they for this kid. I think a direct quote is that, that sometimes they feel like a girl, sometimes they feel like a boy, which is a very normal gender fluid identity. This is a really strong example of how well Louis Theroux actually connects with kids, which I don't think I went into his work with children thinking that he would be. You know, he's got that kind of like awkward silence thing that makes adults open up. He sits down, gets on the level with the kids, and he's asking them about like Minecraft and he seems absolutely amazed by something that the kids really enjoy. I think there are queer filmmakers who have made much better films about transgender kids. It went above my expectations of a 2015 documentary by someone who identifies as a cis man. I'm gonna give this a B. And then we have A Different Brain, which is a 2016 film, which is about people kind of suffering from long-term brain injuries. Problem for me is that I think I watched it around the same time as I watched Crash Reel, which is also on BBC iPlayer, which is about the snowboarder called Kevin Pierce, who suffered a really, really horrible accident, and also My Beautiful Broken Brain, which also came out around the same time and David Lynch exec produced. That is such a beautiful, creative representation of someone who's had a stroke. So I'd seen two quite creative views of brain injuries. So I think that that does dampen my perspective of it. I'm gonna give it an E just because I'm comparing it to other films I've seen, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's bad. Okay, next up we have Louis Theroux drinking to oblivion, representing people who are battling alcohol addiction, which I think is a really, really important topic for him to have covered. I'd say it's like between a D and an E, but I'm actually running out of space on the D tier, so we're going E. And now we have Savile. It does something that other episodes don't do, which is really focus on Louis's own life and feelings and experience and him dealing with having been, you know, friends with someone who did one of the most horrible things you can imagine. Because you just see a different side of Louis Theroux and after, you know, 30 films or whatever we've already seen at this point in the tier list, it's nice to see him turning in on himself a little bit more rather than his other follow-ups, which are kind of going back to the same situation and seeing how they've changed. Instead, he's going back to a situation and unpacking the stuff he wasn't able to unpack before Savile died. We've got an S tier. The S tier vote is Potentially because I want to give When Louis Met Jimmy the S tier, but I couldn't because I wasn't 100% on the other episodes in that series, but it's there. Next up we have Louis Theroux talking to anorexia. When I said I had seen every single Louis Theroux documentary, that was a lie. I have a personal history with anorexia. I did not want to watch that on screen, so I haven't seen it and therefore it's going in the F tier, not because it's necessarily a bad film, but because I have not seen it. And now we come onto the two I actually had to watch this morning because I didn't realize I hadn't seen them. So we have Louis Theroux, The Night in Question. At the start of the dot, it was focused on the perpetrators and the consequences for them. I do understand why they chose that angle. The victims of the assault, you know, none of them came 
forward and were happy to speak about it until quite late on. And that's not the fault of the documentary, like they had the access that they had, but there was a level of like, how much do the victims of these crimes actually want this to be broadcast on a Louis through documentary? I personally can't imagine having gone through that and then, you know, millions of people seeing an interrogation of the consequences and giving that much. In the first half, it felt like airtime to someone who was defending their actions. So I started off feeling very reserved about it and very uncomfortable, but then realized that it actually had been very, very well structured because you start off, the main contributor kind of convinces you that he's in the right and that he hasn't done anything wrong. And it goes on and on and on and it slowly pieces apart and you just realize how much he is controlling this narrative. It gets further and further in and you just become more and more uncomfortable. And I think that was really, really interesting structurally that they made that decision. I do know specifically in Forbidden America, we did have an all female crew for the episode that was about Me Too. So I'm hoping that a similar thing was done here or at least crew who were creating a welcoming environment. I'm sure all the ethics were dealt with, but I'm just very conscious of them. I'm gonna give it a B because I felt uncomfortable the whole time. And I know I felt uncomfortable because of my own shit, but this is my tier list. I can do what I want to. We've only got two episodes left. Next up, we have Mothers on the Edge, which I also watched this morning. Again, we got to see Louis Theroux working with children, this time with babies. He clearly really wanted to like hold these babies. Like he was clearly like, Give me the baby, I want to cuddle. And I really appreciate that. So it's getting extra points for Louis Theroux and baby content because it's a documentary about postpartum depression and postpartum psychosis. I think it's an amazingly important topic. I was absolutely blown away by how open the people in the film were. This is better than the other medical ones just because I think it talks about something that I hadn't seen in documentary before. Louis Theroux is sitting in on conversations with medical professionals and he's sort of butting in at times, which I'm sure everyone in the environment was happy for that to happen, but it did feel slightly odd occasionally. So we're going C tier, I think, with that one. Finally, we have his just before the pandemic film, Selling Sex. You know, it's an ongoing continuation of his clear interest in sex work industry, kind of visitation of the way it's changed in the like 25 years that he's been making films. I don't know if I mentioned the Twilight of the Porn Industry where he goes back to the group in Weird Weekends. You know, it's, it's never gonna be as good as that first episode he does on porn. So, we're going a nice little C tier again. I've finally finished. Louis, you did it, you did it! That's what I think of every single one of Louis Theroux's documentaries. If you agree with me, if you disagree with me, let me know in the comments. If you like this, like the video, please. Let me know which filmmaker I should do next. I'm thinking David Attenborough or Michael Moore. I am actually now legally required to ask you to subscribe and I hope you enjoyed this video and it's ever-changing lighting. I hope you're having a lovely day. Thank you so much if you've watched all the way to the end. I'm absolutely amazed with you because I'm not sure I even edited all the way to the end. I wasn't quite sure what I'd just seen, but I knew it was time for me to leave.